My name is Ron Gold and um, this is the last in the series of short videos that I'm making in conjunction with Three Tree Hill on the Voortrekker period. Last week we dealt with the first part of the story of the small battle of Rendsburg's Kop when the defenders, having managed to get up onto the ridge, discovered to their horror that they did not have sufficient gunpowder that brought up barrels of salt instead. The true hero of uh, this story is a young man, about 19 years old, by the name of Martinus Oosthuizen. Martinus and his family were camped on the upper reaches of the Bushman's River, probably uh, 10 kilometers or so from the modern town of Escort. And early in the morning, Martinus's mother had awoken, woke up the family and said, I can hear shots being fired. And the father became concerned and instructed Martinez to take his mother into the lager at Zylar, leaving the father to tend the stock. Well, Martinez did just that, and having deposited his mother safely in the lager, he thought he'd take the opportunity to um, see if he could locate a horse that had strayed, that had been missing for a few days. Martinez, in searching for the horse, will eventually end up on the ridge on the skyline behind me. And uh, the whole drama was apparent to him. On the ridge where I'm standing, he could see the fur trekkers clustered about, and from there he could shout across to them. And one can imagine him saying to Commandant Frenensberg, hello, Worm, hello, Uncle, what's happening? How are things with you? Well, Commandant Frenensberg was not in the mood for light banter, and he shouted back, Sian, son, I need your help. And what he told him was that they had no gunpowder. Well, there was gunpowder in the wagons, and the only man who had a horse was Martinez, and so he undertook to uh, ride down into the valley through the teeming hordes of Zulus that are attacking this hill now, this hill now from the east in particular. And Martinez then rides down the slope, and as he rides down, he noticed 100 meters or so off to the south of him a small group of Zulus. He stopped, jumped off his horse and fired one or two shots, and by an incredible stroke of good fortune, one of the Zulus who was killed was the Zulu chief, Manzim Dada. And it is almost certain that the Zulus found that an extremely inauspicious omen, that the, amongst the first shots were fired that the chief was killed. And this might account for the fact that they did not pursue Martinez with any great zeal. And he seemed to ride through them. And he galloped frantically down to the Van Rensburg's wagons. And the story is that he made his way into the wagon and sure enough, there were kegs. He grabbed a keg, rushed outside. Then he thought, well, he better check. And sure enough, they didn't have gunpowder either. So back he goes to the Van Rensburg's wagons and he finds kegs of gunpowder, <coughs> loads them on his horse, but he also found in jerking a, 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 a blanket aside, in searching for it, he found a little girl. This is Van Rensburg's daughter. She might have been 10 or 12 years old. So the bold Martinez grabbed the little girl, uh, threw her across the saddle in front of him, and uh, spurred his horse in the direction of this copy. But as he was riding through, the Milan Spreit, which wasn't in flood, but it was quite full. The horse couldn't make much speed. Zulus came swarming around him, snatched the little girl off the saddle and stabbed her to death. But Martinez himself, uh, encouraged by the uh, support uh, musket fire from the Furtreggers up here, rides boldly onto the eastern rim and up to the top of the hill and uh, delivers little kegs of gunpowder to the hugely relieved group of Furtrekkers. Martinus Oosthuizen, by now of course, is becoming hugely concerned about the fate of his family. And so he will bid the Van Rensburgs farewell. And I suppose much like the Lone Ranger riding into the sunset, he rides back down the hill through Zulus and disappears. But the Furtrekkers now had sufficient firepower and it's a very difficult place to assault. And the the spirit seemed to have gone out of the Zulus, and after attacking for a while and losing 50 to 100 dead, they withdrew. And the day was saved, and Rendsburg's Kop was one of few 
um, success stories on that particular day. Later in that same year, in August, Martinez was chosen married and uh, the wedding was attended by the extremely grateful von Rensburg party and the story is that they paid for the entire proceedings. Tini, as he was known, Ustazen lived a long life, eventually dying in, uh, I think it was 1898. And he's buried not far from here. But the story is that every year, when the Furtrickers gathered to give thanks for their salvation, uh, he would regale the, uh, the gathering with this story. No doubt over the years the story uh, was embellished a little and grew a bit, but nonetheless, um, his role is undisputed. And that will bring us to the end now of our saga of the Furtrickers, and with our next episode, we'll be looking at a different war.